Thank you, Jerry. Welcome, my friends, to Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas. My job is to get as many gospel tracks out every day as I can because every person I come across will spend eternity in heaven or hell. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In Vegas, we don't have to go to the world because the world comes to us. 41 million visitors last year here to the suicide capital of the United States, the secret suicide capital. You never read about suicides in the paper here or read them, see them on TV. They're, they're not reported unless it's a murder-suicide. And yet uh, people, they lose everything and they're ready to blow their brains out. And so that's why I encourage you to get a bunch of tracks and go into a casino. If you live here, maybe order a cup of coffee and then go down the line where people are playing the slots and you see somebody who looks Hispanic. All right, I'm going to put uh, Why is Mary Crying in Spanish next to that person. You see somebody who looks Oriental or Asian. Think, okay, I can't tell if he's Japanese or Chinese. You put a Chinese track there and you, God's more interested in the person than you are. He, uh, I, I came out... <laughs> Oh, I was I was going into the uh, the spa. I took one Chinese track, and uh, I took some uh, Spanish tracks. And uh, Allah had no son. And uh, you can read about these in chick dot com. You can read the track. And I had one Chinese track. And I see this man coming towards his car, and I thought, Is he Filipino? I don't. Is he Ch Japanese? I I don't know tie I hold out the this was your life Chinese track and he looks at it he smiles and he takes it only God can do that I mean it's so cool I, a big black brothers going into the casino or the, uh, the, the the spa I held the door open for him and handed him all I had no son he looks at it and takes it you can do it. Anybody can hand anybody else a track. Children are more effective than I am in handing out gospel tracks. If you have a hard time affording tracks, you can go to fellowshiptrackleague.org and get them free. Fellowship, and they've got some great tracks. Mary's Command for Catholics is wonderful. It might be called Mary's Command now. And uh, one day I was on the bridge and I thought, I don't know if they're going to accept this as much as the chick tracks. And... Uh, Catholics would see it, they'd cross themselves and, and take it. And uh, I don't understand how anybody can be a Catholic and stay in the Catholic Church after they've read 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 4. It talks about departing from the faith in the last days, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrineless demons, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats. Let's see, who would that be talking about? Well, Mike and I are going to be heading to Mexico here in the month of August hitting another town, We've hit uh, 22 Mexican towns already. A Hispanic man said to me last night when I was on uh, Fremont Street Experience, I was wearing this shirt, and, and it says in Spanish, uh, wherever I go, God is with me. And he says, you wear that in Mexico, and the cartel will kill you. I said, well, I've already worn it in Mexico, and the cartel hasn't killed me. Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Luke 10, 19, for I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well, Ray Comfort has written the best book on depression or suicide I've ever come across. It's a short book. It's for people who don't like to read. It's only 93 pages long. How to Battle Depression and Suicidal Thoughts. And uh, we're reading it on the air. I've never read it. I've, I've, I've been in radio 48 years. I've never read a book on the air. This is the first one I've read. And we're finishing it up today. And uh, I'd like you to, to listen close. If you missed the, uh, the previous uh, chapters, you can go to uh, uh, Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas on YouTube. And Brandon has it posted there. Thank Brandon so much for doing that. And Dave Peffley, the newsletter. So grateful. All right, let's uh, pick up with um, Pat.
page 86 of How to Battle Depression and Suicidal Thoughts. They've met a waiter that they're witnessing to, they were raised witnessing to. He's, he's talking to John, this fellow who was on the, the bridge, the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, and he was going to jump off. And this is a fictional account, but it's, it's so well done. Matthias, the uh, waiter, automatically took out his rag and wiped off the table. Nice to meet you. I'd better get back to work. Thanks again for the movies. Ray had given him a movie gift card that you can get at fullyfreefilms.com. It's the easiest tract in the world to hand out. I smiled, turned to John, and said, nice guy. Okay, back to what we were talking about. The New Testament offers a few more ways to avoid depression. In addition to being beaten and thrown in jail, the Apostle Paul endured tremendous hardships, far more than most of us ever will. Yet he considered them to be light afflictions compared to the glories that awaited him in heaven. By keeping the eternal view in mind, he was able to not lose heart. I continued, Paul also described how he and the disciples had conflicts and fears, were troubled on every side, and had no rest. Little wonder, then, that he wrote, we were burdened beyond measure, so that we despaired even of life. But he went on to say this occurred so that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Our option as Christians is to trust in God. So here's another verse for you to commit to memory. It's actually the one that's on your cup there at uh, in and out Say it after me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, John repeated. And lean not on your own understanding. And lean not on your own understanding. Got it? That's from the book of Proverbs, which is the cream of the wisdom of Solomon. By the way, did you know there was a point where even the wisest man who ever lived found everything distressing and said he hated life? As Solomon discovered, the only lasting meaning in life is found in trusting God. Wow, I didn't know. And he was quite a wise guy, huh? The original, I grinned. And that brings us to Jesus, our ultimate example, God in the flesh. But because Jesus was also a man, he can sympathize with our pain and weaknesses. The Bible says he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And there were times when he was so troubled that he groaned in his spirit. The night before he knew he would be crucified, he said that his soul was exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Does that sound familiar? Yes, it does, John agreed. That's about how I felt. That's surprising. Here's an important verse. Let me read it to you from the book of John. When Jesus was praying in the garden that night, he said, Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. Do you know what he was talking about? Of course, Jesus came to earth for the purpose of giving his life as a payment for our sins. My sins, John added, smiling. That's right. Jesus never considered taking his life even for a moment, throwing himself off a high building like Satan had tempted him to, or off a bridge would have prevented him from fulfilling the purpose for his life. And the same is true for you. God created you for a purpose and gave you life for a reason. There's meaning to your existence here on earth, and you need to look to God to know what that is. What I'm saying is that God could use you to say to this generation like Paul did that they are not alone and that they should do themselves no harm, I suggested. Speaking of God using you, tell me, how would you have handled you? He looked puzzled. What do you mean? How would you have handled coming across someone sitting on the edge of eternity on a ledge of the Golden Gate Bridge? John wrinkled his brow. I don't know. Well, what was the turning point in our conversation? The turning point, he picked up his cup of water, took a sip, and said, When you first approached me, I was really annoyed. You being there complicated things. I don't want to have anything to do with you. But there was something in your tone. I think it was a gentleness and a love. I could feel a genuine concern. The turning point didn't come until I began to understand the cross. But that story of the man having his heart cut out of his chest by the surgeons was like a hard slap in my face. It suddenly made me doubt what I was planning to do. So that's all you need, love and gentleness, all along with the gospel. I can do that. There are others I know who are struggling with depression, and I want to share with them what I've learned. This is the answer to every human problem. Well, let's say that if the world obeyed the gospel, if they did what you have done, turned from sin, and trusted the Savior, life would certainly be better for the human race. There's a wonderful walk-on-water enthusiasm with a new Christian. I didn't want to dampen John's belief that God can fix this broken world. The only hindrance is humanity, so I chose my words carefully. Think about it. 
Experts tell us they don't know the cause of chronic depression that leads to suicide, let alone the cure. The best they can do is try to treat the symptoms, mental illness, guilt, self-hatred, a sense of futility, futility, and the agony of hopelessness. After many years of seeing chronic depression and suicide grow into an epidemic, I'm convinced seriously, as you like to say, that the only answer to this terrible dilemma is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It promises a sound mind, complete release from the burden of guilt, purpose for existence, a reason to live, freedom from the fear of death, and the living hope of eternal life. Hopelessness leaves the moment we're born again. So despite the fact that we all have our emotional ups and downs of all people on earth who shouldn't be depressed to thoughts of suicide, it's us Christians. We know God loves us. He proved that with the cross. He's forgiven all of our sins and granted us everlasting life. Think of that for a moment. Then he promises to work out all things for our good. All things. However, I'm not saying we won't ever feel down as Christians or even experience depression at times. I added, life is filled with trials and the evil that we talked about. But in Christ, we always have hope. John leaned forward slightly and put his palms on the now clean table. Well, then let me ask you another question, he said. I've had friends who became Christians and for a little while went well with them. Things went well with them. They got off drugs and alcohol, but then suddenly they went back to their old lives. Seriously, what's with that? Well, they were more than likely something called false haunt converts. The Bible speaks a lot about that. Many people think they've become a Christian by praying a prayer or joining a church instead of what the Bible commands, repent and trust in Christ. Those friends who fell away did so probably because they came to Christ to have their problems fixed rather than have their sins forgiven, so they weren't truly born again. Lean back in his chair again, he said, Anyway, the reason I brought it up is that I'm afraid I'll fall away. It was a legitimate concern for a new Christian, I replied. As I mentioned, nothing can separate you from God's love, not even death. The Bible says that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it, and that he's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, so you can trust that he's not going to let you go. It's that same trust that will give you victory over depression. Your faith will give you a joy that will sing hymns in the dungeon. And when <clears throat> the enemy... <clears throat> excuse me. When the enemy whispers for you to kill yourself, the scriptures say to submit yourself to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Look to God's word as your guide, and suicide will no longer be an option. John didn't say a word. He was too busy hanging on to every one of mine. It was God who reached out to you as you sat hopelessly on that ledge. It was he who plucked you from the hands of the enemy, took you out of the darkness, and brought you into the glorious light, I continued. And now he has given you and I the same commission that he gave to the Apostle Paul. He said that Paul was to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. John, take that light to the millions who sit helplessly on the edge of eternity in the darkness of the shadow of death. May he use you to reach many. Powerful, powerful book. How to Battle Depression and Suicidal Thoughts uh, by Ray Comfort. You can get it from livingwaters.com. And I encourage you to uh, watch the movie Exit. Uh, the Appeal of Suicide that uh, Ray has put out. You can see it free right now, fullyfreefilms.com. I encourage you to wait until uh, after the program, or after Brenda's program, too. She's coming up at 2. But according to the World Health Organization, a mass of 800,000 people take their lives every year, one death every 40 seconds. For millions who suffer from depression and despair, exit points to a better way. This compelling movie shines a powerful light in the darkness and offers true hope to those who think they have none. Someone you know may be secretly considering their final exit. Watch Exit and share it with those you love. See the exitmovie.com to watch Exit. Get details on a four-session video study and find other help. If you're considering suicide, please call the Suicide Prevention Lifeline and talk with someone right now. It's free, confidential, and available 24-7, 800-273-8255, 800-273-8255, and the website is suicideprevention.org. 
How to Battle Depression and Suicidal Thoughts. Pastor Brian Kelly, have you ever had suicidal thoughts? The devil tries to give me those thoughts, and then I rebuke him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What's What's a nice fellow like you doing in a faith like this? The Lord Jesus Christ saved my soul from hell in 1996. Never been the same ever since. Amen. Amen. Well, I asked you on today, uh, first of all, Brian's a, an old friend. He's not that old, but uh, I've been in New York City with him and his wife, Leanne, handing out tracts. And uh, I, I, I think I can be gutsy at times, but not as gutsy as Brian. Brian, I've been with Brian on subways, New York City subways, where he's actually preaching on the subways. Now, that's chutzpah. But uh, people say, well, not, you know, that's going too far. No, not if you really believe in heaven and you really believe in hell. If you really believe the people on that subway, if they were to die that evening or an hour from then, would be in hell forever and ever and ever. That's not fanatical. And it's not fanatical. He even has a church there in uh, New York City. Where's the church? And what's the name of the church, Brian? King James Bible Baptist Church. And you don't use the NIV, I understand. We're KJV positive, NIV negative. <laughs> That's there you go. Well, now you have you have a need, but and I want to uh, learn about that in just a minute. But briefly, share your testimony, how you met the Lord, if you would. A street preacher in Brooklyn, New York, on a Saturday afternoon, named Brother Brian Brady who's a Ruckmanite, a Hellfire Brimstone King James, while being Baptist street preacher, led me to the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave me a gospel tract from Fellowship Track League. The name of the tract is You Have God's Word on a picture of a King James Bible. And he gave me the tract, and I accepted it. And then he asked me, if you died today, where would you go? Heaven or hell? And I said, I would go to heaven. He asked me, I thought that, because I'm a good person. And he said, that's not what the Bible says. He showed me the Bible that I was a sinner on my way to hell. You need to be saved, to be born again. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can save me from hell. And so I put my faith and trust in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, how that he was buried, how that he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures, I will be saved from hell, saved from hellfire, saved from the lake of fire. I repented that day and believed the gospel and was born again. Praise, Praise God. I, I know when you mentioned the King James Only Baptist Church, I can I can just see some eyebrows out there, just you know, people just shaking their heads and going, "Oh, brother." Years ago, years ago, I did an interview with a Beverly Hills architect by the name of George McLean. This is in the mid '70s, and uh, he had built homes for Elizabeth Taylor and Dean Martin, and uh, was the chief architect for Westlake Village. And uh, he had become a born again Christian. And uh, I remember asking him, George, when did you realize the Bible was the Word of God? And the very first thing he said, he said, I was reading Proverbs 6, verse 6, and it said, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. And I realized when I read that, we didn't know the working of was a female until the microscope was invented 200 years previous. If Solomon had said, consider it's his ways and be wise, you could throw the Bible out. And then there were other uh, illustrations he used. I was curious one day to see what the NIV, the nearly inspired version, said about that. So I turned to Proverbs 6, verse 6, and it said, go to the ant, you sluggard, consider its ways and be wise. And I thought, you know, if George had read that, he might not have become a believer. Now, there were other verses, too, that, that helped him realize that the Bible was the Word of God. But, uh, you know, when the, the NIV has, what, 22,000 missing words, I think the Bible says somewhere that every Word of God is, is powerful, is true, and uh, we, we shouldn't be eliminating the words of God from, uh, from our Bibles. But um, you have a special need right now, Brian. Let's, uh, let's hear about that. Yes, uh, me and my wife are being evicted out of our apartment, and it's not because we haven't paid our rent. It's because our landlord is selling his condo, and we only have until the 31st, the end of this month, to be out. And we're trying to raise $5,000 so that we can rent a moving truck and put down rent, security deposit. We have to hopefully we'll have to pay a broker's fee so we can have a new place to live. And we really appreciate everyone's prayers and any financial support and words of encouragement. We're running out of time, and, you know, we don't have enough money, and, you know, but the Lord owns the town, Thousand Hills, will own the hill, too. And for my God shall supply all your needs, for which and glory by Christ Jesus. 
So we set up a GoFundMe link, and um, so far we, we got a little bit over $3,000. So we're less than $2,000 short of our goal. We're praying we can meet our goal and even exceed our goal. Like the Bible says, for, for men things are impossible, God all things are possible. And I want him that is able to do exceeding abundantly of all the acts of things according to the power to work within us. So we're trusting the Lord for, for financial miracle. Our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the miracle working God, is miracle working Savior. Amen. So, how do they uh, how do they get to that uh, GoFundMe page? Um, I guess they would look up, uh, you know, my name or our church name. And your your name is Brian Kelly. Yes, Brian Kelly. Uh, look it up on GoFundMe or the name of our church, King James Bible Baptist Church. And it's under, um, you know, looking to move, find a new place to live. My my wife also, Leanne, both has Kelly. She's the one who set it up. So it would be a blessing if anybody could, you know, help financially. More important, pray for the need. You know. Amen. Amen. Well, let's let's do that right now. Let's uh, just lift up Brian in prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for Brian and Leanne and the, the job they're doing in New York City, getting the gospel out to so many people who come to New York. Father, Lord, he has a, a need right now. Uh, 3,000 of that uh, uh, 5,000 has been met. Father, we thank you for that, but we ask you for the other 2,000, Lord, for you to meet that need as well, Father. Uh, we pray that you'll touch the hearts of folks who can help right now, and they'll look Brian up on the Go, GoFundMe page, and, and you'll meet that need, Lord. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for his boldness. We thank you for Leanne. We thank you for the uh, outreach that they have in New York City, Father. We give you the glory and the praise for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you, Brian. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Bye bye. Greet Leanne. Take care. Bye bye. Amen. Well, keep uh, Mike and I in your prayers as we head to Mexico here in a couple of weeks. And I uh, would appreciate your support, too. Uh, but if you have a choice between Brian and me, uh, let me encourage you to go to Brian right now. We, I'm, I'm in need, too. <laughs> but uh, uh, my address is Tim Barron's, B-E-R-E-N-D-S, Post Office Box 24091, 24091, Las Vegas, Nevada. 89101, 89101. I'm on Facebook. There's a few accounts. The only one I'm using is the one where I'm handing Hillary, quote unquote, a track, and I'm wearing my uh, shirt, the convicting shirt. Let's put it that way. And uh, it's Tim Barron's, B E R E N D S. Love to see you on Facebook. Thank you so much for your prayers and your support. And uh, I'm going to head over to uh, Chinatown here shortly. We hit portions of it last week with a couple of friends. I'll be heading over there, and I want to get uh, some gospel tracks into the uh, Chinese restaurants and the Japanese restaurants that are over there. And uh, I know the Word of God will not return void. It's important that you get that uh, Word of God out today. When those multi-level people call your uh, your uh, phone, uh, you answer it and say, thank you so much for calling. Before you go to bed tonight, go to FullyFreeFilms.com. FullyFreeFilms.com. There is a, a movie entitled Exit. If you know anybody who's suicidal, and by that time they'll disconnect you, but you never know who you're going to reach when you say that. So thank you so much. God bless you, my friends. We'll talk to you, Lord willing, next week. Keep on the firing line. And remember, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I'll let you look it up. Bye-bye.